In this video, we will cover the following problem. If you start in the box on the bottom left of a 5x5 grid, how many distinct paths can you take to get to the box on the top right if you can only move to the right and up? We can start this problem by considering a smaller and simpler variation in which we have a 2x2 grid instead of a 5x5 one. The only distinct paths in this scenario are, of course, going to the right and then up, or going up and then to the right. So we have a total of two paths. Now let's try the same process for a 3x3 three three grid to see if this brute force method in which we just determine all of the paths explicitly is still effective. Right off the bat, it's clear that there are a lot more distinct paths for the 3x3 three three grid than there were for the 2x2 two two grid. You could go right twice and then up twice, or you could go right once, up twice, and then right once again, and so on. It turns out that there are six distinct paths for this 3x3 three three grid, each of which I've drawn in a different color. We can see that the brute force method becomes messy quickly, and that it's hard to keep track of each of our individual paths, even for a 3x3 three three grid. So we definitely don't want to use this method to solve our question, which is based on a 5x5 five five grid. One thing to notice is that for a 3x3 three three grid, all of the paths involve moving right twice and up twice in total but not necessarily in that order, of course. We can extend this logic to our 5x5 five five grid to determine that to move from the bottom left box in our grid to the box on the top right, we need to move right four times and up four times in total. This leads to a total of eight moves. If I label these moves M1 through M8, then one possible path would be to move up on moves one, three, four, and seven, and move to the right on the rest. Another distinct path could involve moving up on moves 1, 2, 5, and 8, and right on the rest of the moves. And so essentially, this becomes a problem of finding out the number of ways to choose 4 spots out of 8 to move up in, as the remaining spots are guaranteed to be moved to the right. So the total number of distinct paths is nothing but 8 choose 4, or 70. But let's not stop our exploration of this problem here. Let's consider the same problem for a non-square grid. Let's say its dimensions were instead 3 by 4. In this scenario, we would need to move right 3 times and up twice for a total of 5 moves. We need to choose 2 of these moves to be up, so our answer is nothing but 5 choose 2, or 10 distinct paths. But now you might be wondering why we're giving special preference to the 2 upward moves. What if, instead, we chose where the three moves to the right are going to be first? The answer in this case is 5 choose 3, which is also 10. And so ultimately, it doesn't matter whether you pick the moves up or moves to the right first. The answer will always be the same. And this makes sense intuitively because, for a given grid, regardless of the approach you take in moving from the box on the bottom left to the box on the top right, the answer should always be the same. And I just want to end this video off by clarifying that 5 choose 2 and 5 choose 3 being the same is not a coincidence. This pattern can actually be generalized, and that generalization is, if you have two numbers, a and b, that sum up to n, then n choose a is equal to n choose b. 2 and 3 sum up to 5, so 5 choose 2 is equal to 5 choose 3.